Hi, welcome to the joy of in-painting. I'm glad to see you today. We're going to learn all about in-painting and stable diffusion. A little bit of information first. I'm using 4G UI, a fork of Automatic 1111 Web UI optimized for stable diffusion XL. Now before we get started, I've already prepped my canvas and I'll go ahead and tell you about that while they flash the information across the screen that you need to replicate this prompt. Now so far, I don't have much going on here besides a default positive and default negative prompt, plus a few style lures that I'll explain in a minute. But aside from the style lures, this prompt is basically what I start with every time I start prompting. It's real easy to configure this to load up by default when you load the web UI if you edit the uiconfig.json file. This just makes life a lot easier. And you can specify other things too, like the image size, sampler, and number of steps. Now I'm going to go ahead and start prompting while I explain a little bit about what I'm generating today. So the style lures that I've selected help a little bit with the cyberpunk theme that I've selected today. We've got a style lore based off of the Ghost in the Shell 1995 movie, a style lore based off of Lucy from Cyberpunk 2077, a style lore that specializes in making cybernetic body parts, and then for good measure, just a vintage anime style lore that adds a nice little bit of detail to anything you're generating. I chose this theme today because there's a lot of little details in the image and it's the little details that can really come out and shine when you use in-painting. And that's what I'm going to go over first here on the joy of in-painting is the image refinement process. Adding details to something that's already there. Now you can do a lot with in-painting. You can change the whole image. You can add people in, you can take people out. Really, your imagination is the limit. But I figured I'd start here with refining details just so you can get a feel for how in painting works. Now, what I'm doing right now is searching for a good prompt and a good seed that's a mostly good image that we can just refine. Not looking for anything but huge problems to fix right now. That's a topic for another time. But here we are, we're zeroing in on that image that we're going to be refining for the rest of the video. And now that we have the image that we want, we're going to go ahead and use high res fix to upscale it by 1.5x. And we're also going to use a detailer to go ahead and automatically refine the face and hands. Now, if you don't know what a detailer is, it's basically automatic in painting. You can run it here in text to image or over in image to image. I'm just going to do it here to knock it all out in one step. And what a detailer does is that it runs models that automatically detect and mask off areas like the face or the hands or a body or really anything else that you want. There are a lot of different custom a detailer models. And then it just runs an in painting pass over them. You can specify different things, a different prompt uh, specific to that area that you're refining. But I'm just going to keep the same prompt for everything. We'll watch the 8 detailer process as it happens. And you can just kind of see what it does. I have a really basic configuration here. Just the hands, just the face, same prompt. Run it at uh, 1536 by 1536. Put a little bit of padding in there, really nothing else going on, but a detailer is not going to get us all the way there. We're still going to have to do in painting, which is really what this video is all about. So now for the part you've been waiting for. Let's send this image off to in painting and start our happy little journey. So let's go over all the little settings first. First of all, keep your resize mode at just resize. Let's keep our mask blur at 6 for now. Mask mode and paint mask. Mask content, original. And in paint area, only masked. This one's important because when you use this option, Stable Diffusion zooms in on just your selection and focuses on just that area, which allows it to add in 
a lot of little detail that I otherwise couldn't do. We're going to go ahead and put our seed at negative 1 for random and for all these other settings like the sampler and dimensions and config scale. Those are all exactly the same as what we generated in text to image. Now I'll go ahead and make an important note here regarding these sampling steps. You're going to want to go over into your settings and make sure that this option is checked. It's called with image to image do exactly the amount of steps that the slider specifies. If you don't have this setting checked, ooh, that'd be bad and we wouldn't want that. You'd have all kinds of frustrations when it doesn't do as much steps as you expect it to do. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and make a quick mask around the hand. Now I know a detailer already refined the hands, but I just want to demonstrate something here and the hand is about good as any for that demonstration. And by the way, I'm zooming in using Alt and the scroll wheel. It just makes it easier than trying to in-paint into that little box in the corner. All right, with that rough selection done, let's go on down and change our image size. Now remember, when I said select only mask, that means that the image size here does not have to match the image size of the whole picture. This is simply the resolution at which your selection is processed. And if it's larger than the selected area, it will paint it at a larger resolution and then downsize it to fit the original image. Very handy. And we'll be going over that in more detail in a moment. But for now, let's just select 1536 by 1536. Now this next part is not something that you would normally do, but I'm going to run an XYZ plot that varies the denoising strength. Now the denoising value tells Stable Diffusion how much noise to add into the image before processing it. A higher denoising value means that a more drastic change will happen in your selection. If you'd like to learn more about denoising, I have another video that explains image to image and denoising in a lot more detail. Well, go check out that video if you're interested. Then one last final tweak that I have for this one is I set the only mask padding to zero pixels. The mask padding is a little bit more room around your selection that is fed in to the image to image process. More mask padding means that there's more context to work with. I can go over this in more detail later. I'm just going to set it to zero for now. Now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through the generation process and let's take a look at our results. I've done five different denoising strengths here ranging from 0.4 to 0.8. Let's look at the differences. I'm going to put the original one up here first and then we'll compare the other ones with it. Let's start with the 0.4. Looking at this we don't see a whole lot of difference and that's not very surprising. 0.4 is useful for smoothing over small details and inconsistencies while preserving a lot of the details of the original. Let's take a look at 0.5. Okay, so now we see some extra details getting filled in. There's a little bit of sheen on the fingernails now. The, the cyborg joints are a little bit more defined and there's a lot more rain in front of the hand. Right now we're within the what I call the refinement range of 0.5 to 0.6. This range is a good place to be if you want to add a lot of detail to your image without drastically changing it. And we're going to stick with this range of 0.5 to 0.6 moving forward with the rest of the refinements. Moving on to 0.6 we can see that a lot of our details are starting to become significantly different. For instance, the thumb has completely changed and a lot of the line work looks a lot different from before. Now while this is a lot of interesting detail, the style of this section is starting to diverge from the rest of the image. So it can look a bit jarring to see a hand like this on the rest of the body. And this is something to keep in mind, not just when you're doing this manually, 
But when you're using a detailer, to use a too high of a denoising on a detailer, maybe hoping to fix bad hands automatically, you might get very noticeably different hands than the rest of the image. And that's not necessarily desirable. Stepping it up to 0.7 denoising, we can see a lot of good details here have been added to the cyborg joints. That's very interesting. But also, other details, like the rain, are very prominent in the image. And again, it doesn't really match the surrounding image. So what you have here is a situation where you might want to tweak the prompt to remove the mention of rain so that we don't have all of these raindrops in front of the hands. And another thing to note, if you look down near the wrist, we now have a visible seam. A seam occurs when the difference between the new image and the old image are too different from each other around the edges of the mask. The two images are blended together according to the mask blur amount. But what you see here is a feathering along the edge of six pixels, which is what we set the mask blur to, if you recall. And this phenomenon happens a lot more at higher denoising strengths. And naturally, we also see this happen at 0.8 denoising as well. So, the lesson here is to keep an eye out for these seams. They can occur when you're doing it manually, and they can certainly occur when you're doing a detailer. I can't tell you how many images I've seen that have been ruined by bad a detailer setting. It's a simple fix. Just pay attention and crank the denoising down a little bit if you experience this issue. Now, I hope you don't get too upset with me, but I'm going to toss out all those changes and focus on a different area altogether. This time, we'll do the upper torso. I'd like you to take note of where I'm drawing the mask. Keeping in mind that my mask blur is 6, I paint just outside of the torso into the background just a little bit to allow for that mask blending to be smooth. I also draw around the bottom of the torso along natural seams so that the mask blur is not as noticeable in these areas. Choosing the right mask area is half the battle. And there we go. Now for this one, I'm going to keep the denoising level the same, but change the resolution at which it's processed. And to illustrate, let's first take some measurements. I'm just going to open GIMP here and draw a box around the approximate area and just take a look at that selection size. Okay, it is 692 by 574 pixels. Remember that number. Back in Stable Diffusion, I'm going to choose a resolution that's about the same size. Now, it doesn't have to be exact. I just want to show you what happens when the resolution is about the same as the native resolution of the image. Now I'm going to do several of these. The first one, where the horizontal resolution is 768 pixels. The second one, where the horizontal resolution is 1024 pixels. A third one, where the resolution is 1536 pixels. And a final one where the resolution is 2048 pixels. Now let's fast forward through these renders and I'll go ahead and show you the results. As you can see, it looks different, but the level of detail is about the same. This isn't very useful for us now because we're going for a style that has a lot of detail in it. But this would be perfectly acceptable if you were going for a simpler style and you just needed to change up that area a little bit. Remember as we go along that higher resolution means more processing time. So you don't want to throw more resolution at it than you need because you're just going to be wasting time. Now let's bump up that resolution a little bit to 1024. We can already see improved details here. Take a look at those shoulders. The lines are much more crisp and lovely little details are starting to emerge but we can also see along the bottom of the torso that we have a visible seam. But don't worry about that too much. I have a plan to address that later. Also note that since I selected that blob over her shoulder, 
It's now become a neon sign and it blends into the background a lot better. Increasing the resolution to 1536, we can see even more fine details emerge. The little doodad at the center of her chest is now fully defined and the cyborg joints are now more intricately detailed. And finally, increasing the resolution to 2048, it has now become very interesting. We can now see little wires under her armpit. All the little glowy doodads are now well defined and the area over her shoulder now blends in pretty well with the background. Now I think I'm gonna keep this one, so I'm gonna go over and click the Send to End Paint button, and now transfer that change right back into our canvas. Moving on, let's take care of that lower torso. Remember how I said I'd take care of that seam between the upper and lower torso? Well, this selection here now overlaps with the previous end painting area, and that should smooth out those seams. This is a smaller area than before, and if we take a measurement, we get about 492 by 230 pixels. Now, what do you think our resolution should be? Well, maybe we can go with uh, 1536 by 1024. That sounds about right. I'm going to keep that denoising strength right at 0.57, so let's see what that does for us. We've got a lot of good details in the torso now, but I've just noticed something that's a little bit bothersome to me. It's a seam on the left side. It seems that my masking was a little bit sloppy. It's not too bad. You can probably get away with it, but I'm going to go ahead and redraw the new mask a little bit more carefully this time, and let's see where that gets us. All right, I like what I see so far, and we could just go with this. But just for fun, let's bump up that resolution from 1536 to 2048 just to see what happens. And honestly, it's mostly the same as the last one. So I'd say we wasted a little bit of time rendering at a resolution higher than we needed. But that's all right. I think I'll keep it anyway. There's just one little thing that's bothering me, and I think I'll just manually edit that out in Krita. There we go. And we'll just give that a smooth over with the Smart Patch tool. So we'll go ahead and save that and re-import it back into Stable Diffusion. Now, I've still got so much I could show you, but we're already running pretty long as it is, so I think I'll take care of one more thing and call it a day after that. Now, let's see what we can do about this face. Again, I'm carefully making my selection around natural scenes so that we don't see any blending artifacts. And this is especially important here because I'm going to be cranking the denoising strength up above 0.6. And what I'm going to do here is change her expression. She just looks a little bit too sad, and on top of that, the ghost in the shell aura that I'm using is quite strong in the facial features, and I just want to tone that down a little bit here. So I'm going to emphasize that she's smiling, and put a little bit of extra reinforcement in there for those cybernetic eyes. Sometimes you can get really cool looking eyes if you just focus on them enough. So what I'm going to do here is use a 1280 by 1280 resolution and crank that denoising strength up all the way to 0.65. Let's give that a run and see if we've got the right idea. This is looking pretty good so far, and we can probably keep this. <laughs> but you know me. Sometimes I've just got to mess with things just to mess with them. So I'm going to interrupt this and change the resolution to 2048 by 2048. <laughs> I just can't help myself sometimes. All right, let's generate that and see how we did it. All right, I like how that turned out. Let's put a little before and after up on the screen just to show how far we've come today. I still have a lot of other things to cover, but it looks like I'm out of time for today. I hope you learned something today, and if you want to see more, just let me know. But thanks so much for stopping by today. Take care. And God bless, my friend.